high demand for corn has grown to staggering proportions. However, the supply of this commodity, whose bulk come mainly from capture fisheries, has always been inadequate. In the Philippines, it was only in the last 10 years that prawn culture has gained momentum. But the problem of inadequate seed supply still remains. As a result of the low supply, but high demand for prawn fry and juveniles, many entrepreneurs have gone into the lucrative business of putting up their own prawn hatchery systems. Wild Pinaeus monodon spawners and non-gravid females, including mature males, are caught by trawlers, fish corrals, and same nets. The animals are bought from the fishermen and immediately transported to the hatchery. The price of each animal is based on the stage of maturity. Unlike Pinaeus japonicus, Wild spawners of Pineus monodon are caught in small numbers. The shortage of spawners has been a setback in the production of Pineus monodon fry in hatcheries. Because of this, the CIFTEC AQD initiated studies on the nodal maturation of Pineus monodon in land-based maturation tanks, maturation pens in protected marine environments, and very recently in cages set in ponds. Maturation is induced by ablation method or removal of one eye of the non-gravid female prior to stocking. A ratio of one female to one male and a stocking density of two animals per cubic meter in the maturation tanks is usually followed. Maturation of the female usually occurs five to seven days after ablation. Gravid prawn normally spawn late at night or early morning. An indication of spawning is the appearance of a yellowish-orange scum attached to the walls of the tank or on the water surface. The eggs hatch to nuclei 12 to 15 hours after spawning. Nucleus subsists on its own yolk and does not take any food. It swims by moving its swimming legs. At the Neganis Research Station of the AQD, studies on hatchery nursery systems are being conducted on a collaborative basis with a network of aquaculture centers in Asia to test the various techniques of larval rearing that are currently practiced in Japan, Taiwan, and the United States. The development of larval rearing techniques in the Philippines stems from a modification of the Japanese Taiwanese and American systems. The larvae are reared from nuclei until late mysis or post larvae 1 in the tanks. Then they are harvested and transferred into the nursery tanks. However, they can also be reared directly in nursery tanks from nuclei until juvenile stage. Feeds and feeding scheme used in Japan, Taiwan, and in the Philippine prawn hatchery systems are basically the same. After the nucleus becomes a zoya within 36 to 40 hours, unialgal or mixed cultures of diatoms and algae are fed to the animal. Initial feeding is done such that there is available food shortly before the nuclei metamorphose into a zoya. Within three to four days, the zoya becomes a mysis after three moltings. The mysis swims at an angle with the ventral side up. This will metamorphose into a post larvae after three moltings within three to four days. Mysis are fed with algae and rotifers. Artemia nuclei are given only when the mysis metamorphose into post larvae usually during the first 10 days of the post-larval stage. Finely ground muscle meat is given from post-larvae 6 until harvest. 
For a hatchery or nursery system to be fully viable, an algal laboratory is necessary. Production of unialgal cultures of Skeletonema, Kytoceros, Tetracelmis, and other natural food organisms can be programmed to provide continuous supply of starters for outdoor cultures and can be used directly for feeding in larval tanks. Outdoor algal cultures of Tetracelmis in a series of one-ton fiberglass tanks is a must to provide food for the larvae, especially in large capacity rearing tanks. One of the principal criteria for a hatchery site is seawater quality. Seawater with minimum seasonal fluctuation in quality is most desirable. It should not be affected by inland discharges containing agricultural runoff nor industrial wastes. Seawater salinity should range from 28 to 34 parts per thousand. Two to three days after initial stocking of nauplii in the rearing tank, water is added or replenished daily. Daily water management is essential during larval rearing operations. This is to prevent the outbreak of diseases and accumulation of metabolites. Post larvae 20 and post larvae 25 are usually harvested and directly stocked in grow out ponds. Studies in Leganes Research Station show that post larvae 25 directly stocked in grow out ponds can attain 75 to 80 percent survival rates after four months of culture. Harvesting of fry in nursery tanks is fairly easy. Two-thirds of the water volume in the rearing tank is drained. Prior to opening the drain cap, a harvesting tube net is fixed onto the drain pipe. The net serves to retain the fry and juveniles while the water is being drained. The fry that are retained in the net are then transferred into the pail. The harvested fry in the basin are counted either by estimation or direct head count. The estimated or counted fry in each basin are then placed in plastic bags with 5 to 10 liters of water. The plastic bag is then oxygenated and placed in styrofoam or pandan bags. The fry is then ready for transport to the pond site.